today's topic is love yourself. And I think this will clear up your confusions about whether there are religious conflicts. And all of you who grew up as Christians, uh, <clears throat> what's the essence of Jesus' teaching? Love thy neighbor as thyself, and God is love. What does that mean? What is love? My understanding is that love is indescribable, unknowable. Thank you. <laughs> Whoever's got the dog, please shut the dog up. <laughs> That part of existence which is unknowable can be called consciousness, can be called love, can be called life. All the things where people... Bob, is that your dog? Okay, that's better. <clears throat> All the experiences that people call love somehow are opening up the channels inside yourself to experience the always present, overflowing amount of this mysterious thing called love. All the work in loving yourself is negative. It's natural to love yourself. When all the Buddhists say from the very beginning, all beings are Buddhas, that's what they mean. You all have the potential, like the babies, for enormous flow of love. We learn to suppress and inhibit, stop the flow of love. So all the work of loving yourself is letting go of the obstacle. And the biggest obstacle to loving yourself is called the self. And that's what this group is about from a different angle. All the enlightened people say the less self the more love, the more, or if you're on the path of love where you're doing things that increase the amount of love you experience, as a byproduct, you experience less and less of the idea of self. There are three stages of love, though they do, it's not like all of a sudden jump thing. It's kind of a continuum. The love most of us know is you love an object, like you love your baby, or you love your boyfriend, or your mother. This is the love that most people experience. <clears throat> it's got deep biological roots. When a diatom, a bacteria, divides, the flow of love increases. That flow of love somehow is there at not only every sexual thing, that every tree, every organism, every crocodile does, but it allows mother bears, mother birds, mother snakes to sacrifice their own lives for their children. So this is, you know, really, but the next level of love is what Martin Buber calls I Thou, where you see 
yourself in each other person. So, I love you because the divine is in you. And I see it in me. I cannot not love you. When you get to the second level, you're what's called unconditionally loving to each individual. You can't help it. If they're open, they get the best you got. The third level, which I haven't reached yet, is you become love itself. You and the universe are one. You are love. You, it's not that you love anybody else. It's that there's such an aura, such a field of love around you that everything that comes into it starts to be transformed. That's what great beings like Osho and Buddha, Jesus, you know, that, that's the third level. And there's absolutely no sense of self. You ask those guys, they say, I'm just one with the universe, there's nobody here. You know, I use the word I because that's all I got for you to have a conversation about, but really there's nobody here. Bringing it back to how to love yourself. Whenever there's an idea of me, it's a block. Now, the idea of self, not only do we carry a lot of it from our past lives, but from the time you're in the womb, any positive experience, you start saying, pre-verbally, this is me. And any negative experience, you say, it's mommy's fault, even before you have the idea of mommy. When you get to about nine months, on the outside you see what's called separation anxiety, and on the inside, the idea of the bad self the negative self starts to happen. And you blame yourself for anything that happens wrong and bad. So when you lose a job, or have an accident, or get sick, the bad self says, I deserved it, it's my fault, it's just what I expected, and the bad self grows. The more bad shit that happens to you, the bigger your bad self cut gets, the more it cuts off the flow of love, and the more you may make a movie out of life to get more bad stuff happening to you. All of you who are therapists have probably seen so many patients wondering, why do they hang on to their sad story? Because it's their sad story. And that's why, unless you get rid of yourself, you can't get rid of your suffering. Because you're attached to your suffering because it's you. And your good stuff isn't much better. You know, like Donald Trump is a fantastic example of somebody where the good self, you know, I'm the greatest and I'm the strongest and I'm the best and it's wonderful. And the bad self is projected onto everybody else. They're bad, they're this and that, you know. I, he's so sick, but he's a walking textbook. But there are lots of other people who identify with him because they're in the same goddamn place. Osho once said, your ordinary mind, you're either a murderer or a suicide. that when something <coughs> unhappy happens, you either blame the other guy and try and kill him, or blame yourself and try and kill yourself. And we all do it, not to the extreme all the time, but if you watch yourself, 
you're going to say, oh, Christ, look what I did. There it is. So loving yourself means being aware of yourself enough when you see this stuff once you're aware of it you don't have to fight it you just it goes away being aware of it is the medicine you don't have to fight it that's where a lot of westerners are stuck in their meditation because they've learned they have to do everything so they think I have to fight the bad thoughts. No. That gives them energy. The Zen guys say, trying to eliminate one thought with another thought is wiping out blood with blood. You just sit with awareness. Inside you may say something like, oh my God, again, I thought I was over that stuff. But that's the quickest way is to relax watch it and do something that's fun those of you who are talking about how involved in your lives you were that's a terrific medicine as long as you're self-aware while you're doing it if you get lost in your activity this kind of plays like another program in the background but if you can be self-aware while you're leading your life then these negative programs, you sort of see them and they float away. Details of self-awareness or self-love. Every organism has got amazing feedback mechanisms for saying, this is healthy for me and this is not healthy whether it's too much non-native electromagnetic fields, like Carolyn can say, this place feels crazy wired, I want to get out of here. Many people are more sensitive than me. Or a light is too bright, or a food tastes like shit, or you've eaten too much, or somebody feels like their energy is negative and you can't stand to be around them. You've got sensors every level for what's correct for you and what's not. Loving yourself is learning to tune in. It's not written any place. Dr. Oz, Oprah, nobody can tell you. The Ten Commandments, nobody can tell you what's right for you. They can say, hey, maybe look here. But you have to look inside. You have to be aware of what's right for you Trust it and follow it. That's self-love. Putting yourself in the right place, getting enough rest, eating food that feels good for you, hanging out with people who feel good, not working too hard, not watching too much crap on the television. Self-love is not complicated. It's just that we're so lost in the hypnosis called contemporary life and how unnatural it is that we don't love ourselves enough to trust the little signals from inside about what would be right. If you get the signal and then you don't do it, that might be a, a time to look and say, am I hurting myself now? because I think I deserve it. Like, I don't know if many of you, there's a study called ACEs, Averse, Adverse Childhood Events. It started when a guy out of Kaiser Permanente in Frisco was running a weight loss clinic. And he noticed that a lot of his people couldn't lose weight no matter how much they thought they were going to follow the program. So he looked into what had happened to them in their childhood. And it just got so clear that the more you were abused, neglected, pushed too hard, bullied, scapegoated, all, all the terrible things that can happen when you're a kid, 
the more of these you had, the harder it was to lose weight, the worse you, and then they got together 17 major childhood events and they took like 30,000 people and followed them for 25 years. And what is absolutely clear is the worse your childhood event score is, not only are you more obese, not only more depressed, drug addicted, have more physical illnesses, die earlier, you know, like this negative self, not loving yourself, affects everything that we consider important in life. So it's not just about getting enlightened and stuff. It's if you don't love yourself, you're screwing yourself up at every level. The things that help me love myself. I make sure to do my exercise every morning. I don't feel good if I don't. I bounce on the rebounder, I lift weights, a couple hundred reps, and then I do about six sunrises. But before I do that, I have at least a 15 minute hug with Carol. And we have it at night too. If you have anybody who you love, you can melt. The energy is so healing. To me, that's one of the most self-loving things you can do. Massage, especially with somebody you love. Exchange massages. If you're still into sex, tantric sex is better than a quickie learn how to prolong it. There's all kinds of stuff around about tantric sex. I'll put a reference in the book. Anything that lets go of your negative thoughts and allows this flow of love, those will help with self-love. I want to stop now and I'd like us to go around and anybody who wants to say anything about the things that they've discovered about self-love. Because it's such a, you know, profound topic. You can't love your neighbor until you love yourself. That's where the Catholic and all the other Christian churches have missed since about a hundred years after the death of Jesus. They screwed it up. They became a church militant, beating up on yourself, full of self-punishment, self-criticism, asceticism, self-denial. It's the same crap that the Buddhists do to themselves, that the Muslims do to themselves. Every religion got lost, except like there was a few Muslims called the Sufis, who were totally lost in loving themselves and God is the beloved, and all their practices are to increase self-love. The Buddhist practices of com cultivating compassion and stuff like that, of guru yoga. Any tradition you go into, you'll find a small stream of mystics who teach them in whatever language there is that loving yourself is the start. You can't love God until you love yourself. What it means that God is within you and without you is that if God is love, when you become love, then you are God. I think that's a good place to stop. <laughs> Echo. That's all right, just talk. Okay, so about this self love, um, and I really, I experienced what that was so intense, I'll never forget it. Because when my mind stopped, you know, when I was searching, like everyone else is, you know, what is this self love, right? It was brought this to my attention, so I really started focusing on it. The result was this. If my mind stopped, my energy just burst open from this part of my chest, and so my heart, this throat center, and this center were open, and I realized there was 
always was up there. It was never not there. And what happened was the dust of life just covered everything up. And then when I realized it was always there and it was never absent, it gets kind of funny at that point. You start laughing sometimes in the most inappropriate places. But it's really the truth. Anyone who feels like they don't have love in their life, it's just the dust of life covers. Now, I had a very abusive childhood, so I had a lot of dust. And, but when that was removed, I could see the truth. Now, occasionally, you go back to the dust, and you go back to the clarity, but it's always there. It's never not there. So that was it. <laughs> All right, Christopher. <laughs> well, I remember when I spoke earlier, I started out with uh, loving myself. So I got it backwards from the beginning. <laughs> that was the know yourself portion. Uh, I'd like to, to present just a, a small map of how it fits for me to see if there's any distinction between knowing myself and loving myself. And um, knowing myself is an absolutely, in my experience, a neutral experience. It's just a clear, solid, recognition, observation, it's just pure knowing uh, doesn't require thought and it doesn't require emotion. None of that is in my experience of, of knowing. Knowing is just simply, very simply um, a stateless state. So you can't put a you can't characterize it, and yet you cannot deny it. And then, loving myself is um, its another face of, of knowing myself. It's, it's how I experience myself through the body, and the body is incredibly sensitive, and it has all of its textures and nuances and, and infinite ways of, of moving and relating and that's and I, I, I would apply the term loving myself uh, I can say this is very loving oh just I can even hear my voice it just has a oh to it um, and in another awareness we have is, is our perceiving, how we see the world, how we see objects, how we see nature, how we, how we see what we see. And in love and in, and in knowing, that, that's, that's beauty. You see beauty everywhere through perceiving. And so the sensing and, and, and knowing and perceiving all different flavors or textures of the same loving, knowing, infinite awareness out of which we're all composed, through which we experience ourselves, and which is always what we're suspended in. So I'd like to break it down into what, what aspect is, what frequency am I in tune with um, from the same transmitter? So it's uh, love, love and beauty and truth and also body, mind and world all together is this incredible package of understanding. So it's helpful for me to, to make these 
small distinct distinctions, concessions to the different faces of God. Okay. Thank you. Sammy Joe, as long as we're having the away game first, do you want to say anything? Um, no, I, I'm okay. I'll just listen to the next folks. Okay. What about the other guy? Are you still there, Bob? Maybe he took the dog out. <laughs> Who would like to say anything? Um, one of the things that has, has just happened is I, I had my horse delivered here. And that had been sort of my meditation back when I had had her previous. I, she was walked up to me right when she was born, still wet, and connected. Had her for eight months, was away for a certain amount of time, had her back, and then was training for a year and a half. And um, I feel myself and I feel that love when I'm with her because they say green and green equals black and blue. So if your horse isn't trained and you don't know how to train a horse, you're gonna have to end up black and blue. But I've always had a very empathic way about myself to where other people has made other people uncomfortable because they feel it's too intense and intrusive. Like how would I know that or um, that kind of thing. But to me, my thought of God has always been described like drops of mercury. Up here is the big mass of mercury, and we are a drop, each of us. And when we die, we go back up. And that's how I try to explain it to my daughter, um, and that that's all love. And so my connections with people, and my connections with the horse, my horse, and um, and sometimes strangers. Um, and when it's that fast, and you can feel that this is a person that I will feel that fast, loving connection with, that's my experience of love. And that's, that's what fills me. And, um, and that's, I find that wonderful, and it's when it's the uh, the old things, like being brought down to a eight-year-old child when my parents come and visit me, and their presentation of how you are supposed to live, what is a waste of money, what's too dangerous, all the decisions that they've impact on me, which has never been my style. That has never been me. I'm cut from a very different cloth. Um, that comes in, and that changes that environment for me, even though they're supposed to be the most loving essences. It, it breaks it down, because for me, it breaks down my joy, it brings, it breaks down my feeling of love in the world because there's so much crap over here and neuroses and whatnot and their identification with me that gets in the way of my moving on. And I have so many times, but I can feel it like a brick hitting me in the head when they come and they it starts going like this. So I'm trying to remember myself and feel what I feel amongst that kind of chaos. And, uh, and that's sort of how I do it when my connections with, with people and, um, and nature, like Christopher said, and with beings, animals, What's up? Yeah. So, 
raised your hand. Like you yeah, no, to. I want to. I got to share. So, when I first started studying enlightenment, my favorite definition of spirituality was saying, being kind, kind and loving to everybody and everything no matter what. And I was like, oh, that's pretty simple. So, then my goal or my intention was to be unconditionally loving to everybody and everything. That's all I wanted. That's all I wanted to become. So, what arose in my next experience was all this stuff in which I wasn't loved. So then um, he was saying, my, one of my teachers at the time said, well, if you ask for love, and that's all you want to become for those around you, everything that's going to come up is that isn't love to be shown to be healed. So in the moment I was like, oh, I'm in the wrong place. I asked for this, and now I'm being shown all these things. Him saying that was like, wow, okay, I'm in my right place. I'm right where I'm supposed to be because I asked to be loved, to become love and to be loved for everybody else. So I'm giving myself self-love and loving those around me. Now, everything that isn't that shows up. So then what happened was truth needs no defense. So gravity, if you like it or don't like it, it does the same thing. If you agree with it or don't agree with it, it does the same. So it's the same as truth. So if I'm love and truth, then I, the moment I'm defensive, that's me not being in love. Because the, if I'm truth, I don't need to defend myself. Uh, and the other, the other part that I, that's like the awareness to look at myself and see that I'm not love in that moment is resistance. Because if I'm really resisting something, that's showing me like I'm trying to avoid it. But I can show up to somewhere and, and, and change paths. But um, so those are two tools that I use for self-love. Uh, and that first one is really good for me to know that the moment I ask to be loved to those myself and those around me, that everything that's not that's going to show up. So in the beginning, it was I was forgiving myself all the time, all the time. Like every day, I'd sit in my locker bed and forgive myself for saying that saying it kind of harsh, or I forgive myself for being late, I forgive myself for all these places I was holding myself accountable. And eventually, the space spreads out, and then you just, you love more often. Those are some tools. Yeah. I want to jump off of that. So, I similarly asked for what I thought I wanted more than anything in the world, which was I meditated, and I said, I don't care he has a car, I don't care if he has a job, I just want unconditional divine love. And after the meditation I looked up and three birds flew over me so I was like, I have been heard, it's coming. And two weeks later I met him. And we've broken up a lot. And let me just tell you, well, it just, not a lot. Often, <laughs> every t I didn't realize it until he said it, but what has shown me what love is is discovering what it's not and what I thought I wanted from him or someone else to give me in five years of knowing him I uncovered a boatload of shit of why I can't love myself and every defense in the world came up in relationship when we break up I mean like the most mundane moments where I just like adamantly refused to love myself and yet the irony is, is even though I felt like he was bringing it up and pulling it out of me, he was also my motivation for going through it because I enjoyed our time together so much, even if we were just friends or even if we were, you know, romantic. And so love for me, it's been the pull that has motivated me to go through all of my shit. It's been the, the light that has like, I've seen at the end of the tunnel and I'm like, I know that this is painful, but I'm going to go through it because I I know that this is not real. It's been the most challenging thing in my life to ask for unconditional love, but it's also been the most restorative because I see that it was always there. I just put up all these blocks and like reasons why and then sought for reasons to defend why I couldn't love myself. So one person for me has done that and just shown me that I was really the only thing I was looking for. And that has been the best thing that I've found. Whatever me is. Yeah. That sounds really sweet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'd like to say something. So, like, after, 
hearing everything on self love. After hearing everything on like self love, I, like I said, I wasn't exactly like on caught up with all the reading all the emails. But I believe like, but I was working on myself. But I was not like reading. Through. But I realized that I was working on self love without even like really fully understanding it. Because a lot one of the things that I was trying to get, well, I wasn't getting better with was um, not beating myself up so much after whatever goes on, whatever, like blaming myself. Like when things go wrong, like I was really, really harsh on myself and I was one of the things that I was really working on, like like, like to let, to, to, to let go. Like it's just like, I, it doesn't, like whatever it is, is, is like, the only thing left for me is it like, not left, but like I can just go forward. I can just do like, it, like whether on, whatever's on the opposite side forgives me or not, it doesn't. It's just I can just like be and keep moving forward and and not have to blame myself, not have to like that. Doesn't, doesn't even in the most like literal sense, it doesn't even help the situation. Like and I also like as having conversations with my cousins, just like because they've been around a lot and we kind of just like we've been in the same house for for a while. Like, and it's just like kind of packed. So like, sometimes like people are getting like annoyed with each other. But as like, I've been just trying to just like being open, let it go. Like I listened to some of the stuff my cousin had to say, just to see if I could find it from myself, rather than like, like to, just to improve myself. Like rather than like trying to like defend or like it doesn't have. To, I could just like take in and just hear what you have to say. Like it doesn't have to affect me, but I can learn from it. And just looking, looking to myself and reach for improvement like every day. But just, but just be understand that I don't have to, to, to put myself down for any reason. That's a perfect description of what Osho meant when he said some of us are suicidal. You're putting yourself down. You're blaming yourself for stuff goes wrong. If you can just be aware of it and let it go. And like you said, just accept whatever it is. It'll get better. Last night, I woke up about 4 o'clock. I was really nervous about how today was going to go. Because Teresa had to work, so she couldn't do the Skypey stuff. Dan Clear had to work up in Sarasota, so he couldn't do the camera stuff. And I, I'm not that techie. Plus, to, it's three jobs, really, to run the group. So my head was going, and then it went to eventually other things that had happened in my life. And the big one was when I was in this commune in the 80s in Rajneeshpuram in India, at, in Oregon. And the feds busted it and the commune broke up. And I realized that deep down, part of me was still blaming my master for failing the commune. That this was the part of me that didn't accept what happened and was either blaming myself or blaming others or having expectations that things should be different than they were. And then beating up on myself because things didn't work out according to the expectations. And this is not loving myself. So by 8 o'clock when she gave me a big hug, it was over. But uh, this was my latest, and, and I'm sure I've had 10,000 experiences like this during my life. I'm sharing it with you because we all do this shit. And it's a waste of life. You're not loving yourself when you're blaming yourself or blaming other things. With you, with your parents, Krishnamurti is one of the greatest definitions of love. He says, when two beings 
are together and there's no thought, love happens. That's you and your horse. You and your baby. You and the sunset and nature. That's the, it's the same energy. Like this Dr. Maharaj, Bidi Baba used to say, when I look inside, there's only awareness. And when I look outside, there's only love. Love is the manifestation of the divine. When you are relating to anything. I had a very deep talk with the only other enlightened psychiatrist I know. Gabriel Cousins, who's the head of scene rabbi in the United States. Does everybody know what the Essenes are? The Essenes are a Jewish mystical group. There are two members you may have heard of. One was John the Baptist, the other was Jesus Christ. They were both Essenes. So I asked Gabriel, in the Essene conception of the divine, is there always an I and a thou? You and God. You loving God. And he says that's for the lower level people. But at the highest level, you are one with God. You are love. You are the divine love. Are you saying Hasidim? The Hasidim? The Essene. E S S E N E S. The Dead Sea Scrolls were the Essenes. The Hasids is a Jewish mystical sect that started in the 17th century with the Baal Shem Tovets. Also, so anyhow, everything I've heard feels like it's on the right track. You know? I love hearing more of where you're at. The point of this book is the highest level teachings are out there from all the guys, contemporary who I recommended to you and so many historically. But the process of each of us trying to clear ourselves out grope towards the light is what I want to put out there to give encouragement to so many thousands of other people to say, hey, it, you know, if you, it's not that hard and we all, and you each speak it in a different language. Maybe your poetry will get through in a way that yours won't or mine won't. So whatever comes to your heart in here, have the courage to share it and to say it. I have no goals for any of you. I have no expectations, no standards. I don't have a you're right, you're wrong book for any of you. I'm just so thrilled that you're here, and I want to hear what you got to say. So recently for me, um, as I could say, like what I noticed with myself is that I'm, I'm always willing to give my time, energy, um, or myself to someone else before I'm ready to give, like, before I give it to myself. Like, any, like, time, energy, and the other. So, I've been putting more energy towards myself. Like, um, like really, like, just going out and doing what I want, like, when I want, except for, like, the kind of mandatory things that I need to do, like going to work and buying food and stuff, like, I don't know. But other than that, like, I really just realized, like, putting the more energy that I'm able to give myself is the more energy I can, like, in turn give back out, like, at the back end of things, like, in terms of self-love as well. So I'm working on doing that more and excited and happy about it. So I can really just like relish in my energy and like, and like have a lot of fun with it. So yeah, and not blaming myself on things too. I think um, only other things I've been thinking about is like having like lingering negative thoughts about people and or things that may cross my mind during the day. So it could be uh, a past like relationship or it could be like someone that I've had to deal with and I've been 
more so the relationship though that where like it's just like still like lingering thoughts like crossing my mind and like taking up space I don't know if I should look at it that way or not but that's what it feels like to me like because if, if it's about me and my, myself or like or getting closer to that self and like being more aware is there something that I need to do to like get rid of these lingering thoughts or is that just a uh, <coughs> a regular occurrence, something that I can't really do anything about. functioning out of awareness, you will just fall into whatever is the, the right path or right road or the right thing to do, the right thing not to do. Out of your own nature, rather than out of a set of standards that have been imposed on you by your parents, society, religions, whatever. And that was a very, very big liberation for me. And <clears throat> I still catch myself every now and then making a judgment call on right and wrong. But <laughs> Whenever somebody <laughs> passes <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing because he has a, what he thinks is a solution to this problem. <laughs> just, you know, falling back into awareness rather than the mind making a judgment is really very, very helpful. And it used to be that I had to make an, a really big effort to remember that, but as you get deeper into your meditation, it begins to happen naturally. And I just wanted to share that with you and Peter also had a little comment about external influences on what you're doing or not doing. And that's all I have to say. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and the hardwiring, the personality that you're given, I, don't, I think it's Bodhi, you said that earlier, maybe it's Doug, but um, I grew up with a narcissistic mother and um, everything that I did was a reflection on, on her and unbeknownst to me, um, you know, you, you sort of, uh, I know that I have uh, picked up a lot of those habits of focusing on uh, my small actions somehow having this greater ripple effect on the world and it's going to change the course of something or a slight uh, of someone else toward me has, you know, somehow is a reflection upon who I am and my being. And the when we talk about kind of going deeper and deeper into awareness, it's allowed me to shed to shed some of those things, and it's a layer. It's a layer at a time. And like Carolyn said, she's I'm sure at a, at a much different place than I am. But it's, it's a, a constant reminder, and I I actually laugh at myself more than I don't these days about when I when I see it and I recognize it as this. Give me a break, right? Um, but then that other understanding that goes along with it, which is um, we are, are all at the same time a part of this this place in the universe uh, together, 
And so that's, a, that's also um, actually comforting and makes me very happy to kind of, to kind of re realize that and understand it and be, uh, and be aware of it. So. Mm. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Michael. John Travolta, mm -hmm. he's an angel. The that came down. Yeah. The Archangel Michael, right? And he came down and he loved his sugar and his cigarettes and his dancing and his sex and all of that kind of stuff. And, you know, he's like, this is the only planet you can get this stuff. I resonate with that, you know? I do, but then, and you have Wayne Dyer saying things like, you know, uh, all these people, because he didn't always lead, lead the healthy lifestyle. He was a guru of sorts. Probably most people have heard of Wayne Dyer. And, um, you know, he would say in his younger days, well, all everybody who, you know, they're eating just the perfect things and they're struggling and they're exercising all the time and they're doing all this stuff, they're going to die too, you know? So there's my struggle. Like, how attached do we get to stay here? Um, like Carolyn was saying, I believe that all paths lead to the same place. Um, God is God, source is source, and where people are is where people are. So, um, is it like on this journey, okay, I just want to have some fun, and I don't want to be that serious because I'm definitely coming back again. I mean, we know I'm not there yet, you know, to enlightenment. Um, or is it that bad self where I feel like I need to be punished so I, you know, don't make the best choices and maybe I get into relationships that I know are just going to be fun and then totally go to hell. Um, so there you go. I don't know. But as far as self-love, that's what I'm going to have to look at. And I'm going to watch Michael again because <laughs> I'm going to have to, you know, get to know myself more. So... The church needs to control society, and we need to set up these real scary things for people. Um, and and the whole concept of right and wrong. This is our journey. We all choose it. We write the chapters. We decide what we're going to do this time around. So I don't know. Sometimes I'm just very, what do I want to say, bipolar about the whole thing, I guess, because I... I believe that I should be honoring life and loving myself and not smoking and not eating all this stuff. My whole family is diabetic and I should make healthier choices, but I don't like them. You know, they don't taste good. It's not fun. And so there we go. We'll see what happens next time, right? <laughs> what I learned. The last course is a little tougher. <laughs> <laughs> okay. says you have to find your own destiny that's the lecture but to actually do it is a whole lifetime of self-inquiry of exploration like it's it's so clear to me Pam that your thing there's an identification with your parents instructions in there part of you is obeying it and part of you is defying it you're going to lose either way as long as your identity, the thing is to let go of the identification and realize neither one of them is you. That's what the no self piece of self love is about. Is as long as there's a, I should do this or I won't do this, you're going to lose. Natural, you feel it without the sense of self. Lafitte, are you going to say something to that? Maybe I'm just missing it for right now. You have ten minutes to left. <laughs> give love 
and I, I share, but like all the rest of you, you know, when it comes, push comes to shove, I'll drink that soda. Or I'll, I'll do something, I always do something that, oh, well, the normal said, well, let me put it different. I only realize I love myself when I'm sick and I have to repair myself back. <laughs> and then I realize that, oh my God, I should have probably done something different, but I just, I just have always winged it and I just always just came from whatever was right for me. I never, I, 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 I can't read somebody else's story or even if I try my best, I listen to the stories and I, and I, and I, I get a little emotional and I feel from it, but a lot of time I just block it all because I don't want anybody's story to become mine. And I just, I, I, I'm just going for what happens with me. So, you know, when I, I realized when I got ill one time, I read the symptoms and I got every symptom that I damn read. And if I had just let it just happen and just deal with what, how I was feeling, I probably wouldn't have gotten all those stuff. So I'm just, I don't know if I even, um, like everybody's saying this, they're so happy to be on this earth and it's still such a great place, but I'm not, and they, they come, like she said, she's coming back. I don't even think I should be here. You know, um, I mean, I'm having a good time, but you know, like I, I, I'm trapped in a space where like, I'm like watching at a picture that I've seen over and over and over again. And I'm, I'm listening to everybody and everything is me. And, um, and I'm just like, well, what happened that I'm, back here again. How the hell am I supposed to end up here? And and I'm and I'm not really here. Does I that make any sense? Yeah. But I I, am I sounding crazy? No. 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 I just want to know where you think you're average. Huh? Where About the same be? as most everybody um, else. You know, I just I just want to be um there there was this place when I, I flatlined one time where I just was like in this, um, I was just laying and I was just like uh, free and breathing. And everything was just like energy. I almost, I felt like I was like in a, um, a shiny, colorful place with a colorful, like a good diamond, instead of a diamond. I'll go back there. Where did you get the idea? Well, I don't know. Well, everybody's like, well, everybody sounds like, okay, they're trying to like, they love some, nobody's, like, nobody's saying like, okay, well, let's get the hell out of this place. <laughs> <laughs> nobody's saying let's die, you know, everybody wants to go to heaven, right? I don't believe in heaven, though. Yeah, definitely, yeah. So, I mean, I, I know I'm not, I don't believe in heaven, should either, but you know what I mean? I feel you on that, I think. Well, what's this? What's it? Why are we, why are we, why do we have to go through this? <laughs> like, all this, like, all learning and self-hate and, um. Or like you talk to some people one time and you're like, oh, you open up yourself to them and they're all right there with you in a moment and then they go home and they go through a head trip and then you come back and be like, oh shit, who the hell did I talk to yesterday? Mm -hmm. You know, and they punish themselves for stuff or you know, it's just like a, a whole bunch of like seesaw, wavy stuff and I saw myself going through it a couple times. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna listen to what you guys said and I could add on. I'm not the guy that's gonna ever like go and research or read any of this stuff like that. I just can't do it. I don't have the time to do it. I don't want to do it. I never wanted to do anything anyway. I never wanted to do anything that I'm doing. <laughs> it's just happening. And, and that's I, it. It's just and, happening. And, you and, said it yourself. Yeah, it's and, 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 and that's, what I, that's, that's my trip, man. I'm just letting it happen. So if I come off to be like, okay, well, damn it. I'm just happening. That's it. Namaste. <laughs> <laughs> You don't want to leave the place. You just want to leave, leave the feeling you're in. Well, I don't. I, I don't think I have a bad feeling because you know I I, I did everything to like I, like you know the I, I I meditated, I partied, I oversexed, I did all all the other stuff, and it's just like all the same thing, you know. Oh, really? I dynamic meditate and I jump around, and as soon as I stop that, no, I have to dynamic meditate for the rest of my life because whenever I stop it, I'm crazier. 
So I'm like, oh shit, now I have to jump around every morning else I'm gonna like be like neurotic. So it's like, oh God, it's always something. Isn't that the thing though, is you don't have to do anything to do this? Well, I could just, I could just live right, just live right and do nothing. That's all I want to do, just meditate and just, just float. Just be free and I could just be like staring at, and let everybody else go through this stuff. You are right now. Okay. That's what I did for the whole last week. I literally was doing nothing. <laughs> Get out of bed to do anything. I'm not even talking about doing anything. I mean, I mean just be up in the light with this, like be like a star or something and just shine. And just like, yeah, you guys go through all this stuff here. So I already been through this. <laughs> the words that come to my mind are from, I don't know if it's from a new earth or the power of now, but it feels to me like you're treating the present moment as a means to an end. Like, I got to get through this and then I'll get to that place that's relaxation or pristine. Uh, oh, you think so? I don't, uh, really? Like, the, you want to get back to that place that felt well, like... Well, only because, only because I, 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 when I, I died and I got to that place, and the only way I could, you could actually get to that place is dying. And, you know, every time I, I said I'm going to leave, he's like, you're not ready to go yet. And I'm like, you know, well, um, okay. <laughs> but I am. And, um, I mean, I, I, I love it a lot of... There, if, you were, if you were supposed to be there, you'd be there. So you can, like... But, uh, but I, I guess, I guess, I guess, oh. what some, but sometimes, I guess... I'm there already right now. I just have to have it in my head. And, um, man, my whole trip is, why did I come into this grid? This like, this, uh, this one. Why am I here in this grid? Why am I in this, this life, this lifetime, this uh, yin yang, crazy uh, love and hate and all this bull. Why am I in this timeline? Why am I in this one? You know, why am I not in the one with the, we, we ride in the elephants and we just <laughs> holding on to each other and everything is just peaceful. Why the hell am I in this bowl? It doesn't even make any sense. And nothing makes any sense to me here. Um, could this be a distraction from being present in the moment? Well, that's, that's I just think of the moment a lot of times. Basically, I think I'm basically always in the moment. But you can't be fully in the moment if you're constantly wanting yeah, to get somewhere right, else. Exactly. Well, I, I'm not saying I want to get somewhere else. I just don't see the reason that I'm here in the first place. You know what I mean? It's not like getting somewhere else. I don't mind being. If you you ask me where would I like to be, I would just be in that that light. But it isn't like I'm trying to get in the light or anything. I'm, I'm <laughs> dealing with what I am here. You know what I mean? No. Yeah. yeah. I'm just I'm just here. I'm just happy. You get your mind out. And don't, and don't go into these questions. What happens? <coughs> you just are. Yeah. Just but, you know, most of the time, I'm, I'm only in these questions and stuff when I have, when I'm listening to other stuff, you know, when people are going through stuff. So, I listen to people all the time, all day. And I don't mind, but that's the only time I go through my head trips is when somebody else brings this to me. So you don't have to. No, but I don't mind. I mean, this is just, this, 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 this my, my, my rites of passage. I talk to people all the time. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Hi, I have one tiny little yeah. suggestion, if I may go to Cheetah. Uh, I just ask everybody to consider that any why question never has an answer. You could ponder that for a while to see that why always leads to another why question and never concludes. So, might just see that that's a dead end. I'm okay. done. Okay, very good. So I'm at a dead end. <laughs> <laughs> just keep doing the dynamic every day. You're, you're a lazy motherfucker. That's not what he said. That's not what he said. And you run away from doing the work, and you know what the work is. And you know you're always doing it. I, I do it all the time. That's what I'm saying. I, 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 I do it. I do it. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just... You work coming. is magical. Yeah. And I love it. And I love all of it. But, you know, if I had a, a basic choice, um, this, wouldn't, this wouldn't have been the life, the, the, um, the timeline for me. No. But we're all... <laughs> Thank you. You're a genius at getting attention by suffering in a very existential way. Oh, yeah. Come I'm on. Suffering. Get over it. <laughs> <laughs> You're beyond that. 
Nobody remembered it. Any of you guys remember the drink that you wanted to pick or you just live in it too? I did. I remembered. So you remember that you wanted to pick this? I picked my parents. Okay. And I, I remember distinct traumas that happened, which wasn't significant, but I remembered as they were happening that I signed up for this. Okay. I have parents. For me. That was my yeah. recognition. I was like, it was almost like deja vu. I was like, I kind of remember. I mm. hated it at the moment, but mm. I remembered it. I have parents. I just pop up. Oh, awesome. You know, you're here now. Make the best of it. <laughs> and find your way out. That's, <laughs> you know, buddy. Yeah, see that's what I'm doing. <laughs> oh. I, I, maybe that's why you're here today. <laughs> Somebody had to do it. You picked it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I said one thing, everybody asked for my stuff. Yeah, I don't say everybody's alive. Because you're so adorable. Yes. Yeah. And everybody wants to, you know, cuddle you in whatever way they can. And you say, I'm so helpless, I need to it. And you're, oh, I drink, it's all right. <laughs> Enough. <laughs> anybody, else? <laughs> anybody else got something to say before we wrap it up? I, I want to say one of the things that helped when we first started this, and I think our souls know what we need to move towards, as I started this group, um, was I'm working on making sure that when we put the five things that we want, ensuring that I work through the blockages of, like a blockage of what you experienced that's underneath there, my parents. So I somehow knew that that's what I needed to do, and that was part of my self-love. And the minute that was resolved, I came back here to this group, and I walked out of here with such a sense of love for everything and everyone around me. It was really, I don't think I had experienced that before. And, um, and I mean, I, I, give, I give all day long with, with, with people, but there was a shift in my energy. So I think it's not just, I mean, the fact that we're all here is a, an act of self-love. You know, the fact that we are actually looking into each other's eyes and listening to one another when we could be, you know, the beach or th this is an act of self-love. And I think, um, I mean, this is like it. This is, this is us carrying out self-love and making those shifts and changes. Um, and, but, but the blockages, I think, can keep you stuck there and stop you from moving. And I'm so grateful for the first month that I got to move through that because it has allowed me then to kind of sit here with all of you and feel love or even seeing you in the office. I mean, I, 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 you are love walking around the office. And so for me to see that, I get to replicate that with coworkers and people that come in the office. And it, it, um, it's, it's definitely, I think there's a magic in us all sitting here too. And, and that's transformative part of self-love, of connecting to everything. So, that's all I've got. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Who, who's the guy with the glasses? That's Doug. Doug? That's Doug. That's Swami Doug. The guy who had the... Mr. Mission Impossible. Near death. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that. <laughs> okay, guys. Yeah, I'm going to remember you. That's a wrap for the day. The task for the month is to let go of anything that gets in the way of loving yourself. And we'll all talk next month. The difference between this group and just listening to spiritual teachers is I'm trying to make it as clear as possible that if you don't do the work, it's just entertainment. 
there is a little bit that happens by just being here. But it's the 24-7 self-remembering, self-loving that's going to move you along, or in whatever direction it is. You know. These guys, Christopher's been working on himself night and day for 40 years. Doug, 38, something like that. Carolyn and me for about 40 each. It's not a quick trip. Don't give up. Don't beat up on yourself if it doesn't happen right away. Every one of you I connected with, we're on a mysterious journey together. You've all been initiated already. I can feel it. Relax, let it happen, see what happens. Each one of you is going to have a unique path to see where your journey goes. It's fascinating to you and fascinating for all of us to hear where it's going. You know, that's the joy of it.